um, a cob mare who is used for general riding purposes, who's uh, the owner's owned her for about six months, and the last month she's developed sensitivity to the bit when she's being ridden, showing signs of tossing her head around, rubbing her face and throwing her head in the air. So we've been doing a series of investigations to try and find out what is troubling her. And that's included an extensive investigation of her dentition, including uh, oral endoscopy and diagnostic imaging with CT scanning. And uh, the next piece of the jigsaw is to look at her upper airway, uh, which comprises uh, upper airway endoscopy using this uh, portable video endoscopic system. OK, so we'll go up her right nostril first, we'll ventral meatus. Now this is a fairly uh, intrusive procedure for horses, so she's had some sedation and we just advance up the upper airway as we go. We'll just come back a bit and go more ventral if we can, Ollie, to try and get the guttural pouches. There we go, that's better. This is probably the most sensitive bit for her. And once we've got past the nasal septum, which is there, there we are. So we're now looking at the pharynx, whereupon we can inspect the... Uh, the larynx on the uh, on the screen of the tablet, the iPad, we've got a very nice, high quality, high definition picture. <laughs> the blood vessels and focal lymphatic um, reactivity very clearly there, and the colour balance is really natural. So that uh, that is the advantage of using video endoscopic systems over the uh, prehistoric optical ones. Okay, let's just come back a fraction, Ollie, and we'll advance the probe into the Plica nasopharyngea. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to rotate anticlockwise 180 and we'll just advance in here to look into the guttural pouch. I think that's gone, looks good. It's on a small scope, actually, isn't it? Yeah, well, that went in very easily at the first attempt with a blind probe, which we like. So we'll just use the flushing system to clear the lens of mucus, which gets stuck to it on the way up there. And now we've got a very nice clear picture of all the vital structures in the guttural pouch, including the internal carotid artery, the external maxillary artery that we can see pulsing on the left-hand side of the screen, the stylohyoid bone dividing it into two, the pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve uh, on the lateral wall of the guttural pouch, and the pharyngeal plexus going down, which innervates the pharynx and larynx. And any inflammation of these nerves could cause her to be resentful of, uh, of being ridden and the signs of pain. So she gets a green light, a clear bill of health for that side. And uh, we'll now repeat the examination up her other nostril to look at the left guttural pouch. Like so we withdraw slowly and we'll just look at her nasal cavity as we come out whereupon she'd be a little bit less sensitive than she was when we were, when we were going in. So it's a very nice clear picture and uh, even despite the Wi-Fi we're getting a very minimal delay in the interpolation of the images which can be a problem with quite a lot of Wi-Fi systems in that you're not seeing them in real time which is um, when you're doing it in a live animal even that uh, half a second delay can be, can be quite frustrating and take a bit of getting used to. Um, so this Wi-Fi connection seems to be working, working very fast and uh, no sign of inflammation in her nasal cavity. Tiny bit of mucus there which is within normal limits. And we just come out to the nostril. Good. So we'll yeah. now do the same the other side, which is her slightly less sensitive side. So we did the most sensitive side first while she was maximally sedated. There we go. Good girl. I know, it yeah. is quite intrusive. It's amazing what horses that us put up with us doing to them. Given that they're ignorant that we're trying to help, so just extrude the guide wire. Oop, that's it, bullseye. Right, let's stand there. Let's just go in a wee bit further with that. There we are. Clear the lens again. All right, and you go, Ollie. That's excellent. And that's it. OK, and I'm sure that was more luck than judgment, but we got bullseye first time on both guttural pouches, which you certainly don't with all endoscopes. Some of the wider diameter ones with square ends can be a little bit of a wrestling match to get in there, um, but it doesn't always go in that easily. Abby, if you could move the horse's uh, left ear, please. There we go. Keep wiggling it. There you can see the distal part of the oral cartilage 
which uh, you can easily convince people is a parasite wriggling around submucosally, but it's not, it's an artifact. Good, thank you. So in this scuffle patch, advance a little bit there, Ollie. What do you think that is? Isn't it? Yeah, but it's probably an anomaly. It may be lymphatic mm. tissue just in the caudal wall of the guttural pouch next to the muscles. We're in the, in the lateral compartment. No, it's medial compartment, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Probably, probably lymphatic tissue. Yeah. We'll have a look at that carefully on the CT if it goes back that far to corroborate it. It's not something I would think has caused her clinical signs in any way, and it's probably an anomaly rather than pathological. Okay, so there's the external maxillary. There you can see, you can see the quite fine vessels here, which is very nice. And no exudate on the floor. The steering is very light, which is a nice feature if you're doing fine, precise work like this. Some of the, um, some of the older ones turn a bit like a diesel lorry without power steering. And for, for precise work, you do need a sensitive steering. I'll just test the lock on that. That seems to work pretty well. Um, the driving units are fairly standard and if they're looked after should work quite well. Very importantly for me, for upper airway work, the flushing system works responsively. As you go up the upper airway, you almost invariably encounter mucus that smears across the lens and obstructs your clear view. So a flushing system that, that actually smears across the lens is absolutely essential. And that's been one of the biggest challenges with portable systems, that many of the flushing systems have just been slightly subpar. Um, but this one has flushed very nicely and we've got a great clear image there at both attempts. There's good, good light power, which, for, um, which is more than adequate for upper airway endoscopy. <clears throat> that would be tested a bit more rigorously in gastroscopy where you've got a longer cable and, uh, and a bigger space to illuminate. But for this, we're in the darkest recess of the head here where no normal daylight ever penetrates and we can see these structures very well. So very happy with that as well. And, uh, it balances nicely in the hand and in actual fact the battery pack acts as a nice counterweight so I should be able to hold it without too much strain, particularly when you're doing laser endoscopy. The, the strain on your fingers if you're working precisely with the weight of the scope is quite significant and I actually stand it on a microphone stand normally so I can just use my fingers but if you can balance it like that with your elbow at right angles then uh, it frees up your fingers to completely control it precisely and, uh, and actually the battery acts as a nice counterweight. So um, that, that makes ease of use. I think uh, portable video endoscopic systems are excellent for use in the field. Um, it's very nice to get the owners involved. They can see the image. Uh, it sometimes brings problems in that they can overinterpret them a bit too quickly. Um, and also the ability to record pictures and images means that you can go back and review them later and use them for medical archiving, which nowadays is actually really important. Um, and I think the, the fact that it is very portable I think will make it very useful people are much more likely to get it out and actually make use of it um, and it's less likely to get damaged if there's fewer things to lug around it's it's very easy to get out um, so just less bulk I think is um, seems you know seems to be an advantage for this for the system the image quality is as good as most tower based systems that's usually been the thing that's let down portable systems or, or, or optical systems that have, um, have been converted for video endoscopy for portable use is that the image quality is just not as good. And also the light source, you do, the image quality is greatly affected by light intensity, so if the LEDs are not powerful enough, your image is, is not, not good enough to record. And, and with the uh, tablet screen, uh, which is a very high quality, that means that you've got a very nice, nice clear image. And uh, yeah. No, it's certainly certainly very an advance on some of the previous portable systems that I've tried out. I think the ease of recording could be very useful as well because it, it's always handy to be able to get, you know, we're very lucky here. We have um, Henry here who's very well known worldwide for his upper airway work and so we just give it to him to do. Um, but actually, you know, most horses don't get to come into the hospital. So having our first opinion vets able to make a recording and ping it over um, for a second opinion you know, straight away is, a, I think that's a potentially very useful thing as well. Just helps us to, for everybody to raise their game, get a, an expert opinion straight away. Yeah, and uh, we do um, ambulatory work, and as you can see, this is a standard hospital tower system, and uh, as well as being very time consuming to try and move, they do not like being transported around, and it greatly reduces their life expectancy. So we try, try to avoid doing that, but having a, 
a more portable, bespoke system for ambulatory work is, is, is very sensible. Mm -hmm.